Today we're speedrunning Spider-Man Miles Morales, one of my new favorite speed games. Now the game does start out with two and a half minutes of unskippable cutscenes, but after a bit we can get moving, and the movement tech in this game is sick. There's obviously the general swinging around and doing point launches, which is cool movement on its own, but when there's a straight road, we can do something special. By binding the left D-pad button to swing kick, we can do a movement where we jump, web zip, press swing kick, and cancel it with another jump. Then as long as we spam jump and swing kick, we can go way past the usual speed cap of the game, and this strat's called bunny hopping. The only problem with bunny hopping is you need to put your hands in a very awkward position to control it and constantly be on the lookout for trucks since they can get in the way. But the tech itself is not too bad and just looks sick in general. We'll be using this a lot through the run. Anyways, after we make it to our first waypoint, we meet up with Peter and get our next unskippable cutscene. We're here to watch a convoy that has a supervillain in it just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Unfortunately, something does go wrong and when Miles tries to fix it, he ends up messing with the helicopter's trajectory and now there's a huge prisoner problem. Oh, and also the supervillain they were carrying turned out to be Rhino, so we get to see his ugly mug again, but for now, Peter is going to handle Rhino while we take care of the prisoners. This first part is mainly just a tutorial, we need to beat up the prisoners and learn a few moves. The main combo we'll use though is punch, slide under them, and do two more punches to take them out really quickly. This combo only really works efficiently during this first fighting section, but we'll get more moves in a bit, so it doesn't really matter. And after we deal with the first batch of goons, we want to start climbing up this building. Once we reach the top, the game says you're leaving the mission. For some reason, this skips a lot of the dialogue that usually happens here, and we hear a really incoherent conversation instead. Eventually, we'll jump back down, and finally, after Miles says wow, just wow, we can take out a single guy and move on to the next cutscene. At this point, it's time for our first swinging auto scroller, where we follow Rhino and can't really speed anything up. After a bit, Miles will try to help out Peter though, and jump on Rhino's back, only for Rhino to take us on a fun trip to the mall. In the mall, you're supposed to dodge all the screens and people, but I think it's way more fun to plow right through them, even if we take a bit of damage ourselves. And after a bit of destruction, we make it out of the mall, but not before a cameo from my favorite podcast host, JJJ. What a great guy. Then we do a bit more swing before Rhino jumps into a gas container, starting a huge explosion. This leads us into another combat section where I can show you our main strategies for the first fourth of the run. The combo we used earlier no longer defeats the enemies as quickly, so instead, we want to punch an enemy in the air, web them, and pull them back down to the ground. This will immediately defeat them because they get stuck in the webs. We can also use finishers which fill up as we beat more enemies, and these also one shot. We want to use these in the air so we can do the fastest animation. Finally, there's the strategy of kicking people off buildings, which is pretty easy with an air kick. The only problem is sometimes you can actually kick them onto another building, but we won't encounter that problem till later. After beating up all these guys, we get our next cutscene where we see Peter being defeated. He tells us to run away, but that would make for a pretty sad start to the game, so instead we try punching Rhino and learn that we have bioelectricity powers, which are later named Venom. So that's cool. Then the Rhino fight is pretty funny because it's really easy. Phase 1 we do a Venom punch, combo a few hits to get some damage in, and start spraying Rhino with our web blasts. The web blasts don't actually do any damage, but they do fill up our Venom meter faster, and allow us to do the same strategy until we get into the next cutscene. The rest of the fight is also pretty much the exact same thing. I guess one small difference is sometimes we'll also dodge since that raises our venom meter as well but it's a pretty routine fight and that's the first boss done then we get a cutscene with simon krieger the owner of rocks on energy a company that comes in very important later he says how awesome we are which true and tells us that he'll hold rhino until the police come to pick him up after this peter and miles talk about everything that happened and peter also tells miles that he's actually leaving the city for the next few weeks with mj so we're now new york's only spider-man for the rest of the game he does leave us with a present though so that's that's nice of him. Anyways, we head over to meet our friend Genki. Genki helps us out with all of our missions and tech stuff, so we show him the brand new suit Peter gave us. But we're finally on to the point where there are skippable cutscenes every once in a while, so unlucky for him. There is some really cool tech here though, since when we reach the second cutscene, we can pause the game and change our graphics settings. Then when we're on the confirm screen, if we hold L1 or really any button, press the PS5 share button and hold X right here, the game speeds up for a short bit. Then all we need to do is press O once we make it back to the game, and these actions will cause us to get a huge burst of speed which sends us into the air and makes us go really fast. The amount of speed you can get unfortunately varies by luck, but we got a pretty adequate launch and it's just a cool trick in general. Then after that, we have a short mission which is just another fighting tutorial set up by Peter with some high tech holograms, but not too much to say about it. Then it's time to head over to Roxxon Plaza before we go home to Christmas dinner. Genki tells us that there's been
gonna break in to steal something called New Form. New Form is a really powerful energy source owned by Krieger, which is definitely extremely safe, and Krieger plans to power the city of Harlem with it. But a group called the Underground is against this plan for some reason. So here's the first group of enemies that we'll be fighting through the game. It's pretty much just general fighting using all the same techniques we've used before, along with some venom punches. There's also these guys with the power gloves that block our punches, so the most effective way to beat them if we don't have a venom punch or a finisher is to slide between their legs before doing the same webbing technique we've used earlier. Not too hard though, and once we beat everyone, we see a map that shows all the new form shipments. Then after that, the police show up, so it's finally time to go enjoy our Christmas dinner. When we make it inside, we see Genki, who's staying with us since his parents are gone for a bit, and our mom. She wants us to set up for Christmas by turning on the tree and getting some music started. Also, while we're getting the record, we see a mysterious photo of some criminal named the Prowler, who I'm sure won't be important later. Anyways, we get the music going and awkwardly stand by the door as we wait for our childhood friend Finn to show up. Unfortunately, this game doesn't really like Finn, so we can skip through her introduction, but all you really need to know is that Miles and Finn haven't talked in a long time and we aren't sure why. Anyways, our power goes out and my boy Spider-Man for some unfathomable reason decides to scale the side of the apartment complex without a suit on. If just one person happens to look up, our whole secret identity is gone, but whatever I guess. We find the generator, fix the power of our venom, and head back inside. Sadly, we skip Christmas dinner which is kind of unlucky cause that food looked really good, but right after that skippable cutscene, we have an unskippable one. Yeah, this game really makes no sense with these. Anyways, Genki has been messing with our new suit and making upgrades to it. Now he's able to see everything we see and he created a new app called the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app so citizens can give their own requests for us to do. Now we're only ever going to do the first request since I don't have time to help people, but it's a cool idea. We're also going to set opening the app to our right D-pad because there's some cool stuff we can do with it later. Now our first and only request is actually by our uncle who we haven't seen in a while. Unfortunately for him, literally all of his cutscenes get skipped, but he tells us that something's wrong with the train system and he wants us to check it out. Unfortunately, you miss some really awkward dialogue with us trying to make sure he doesn't learn with Spider-Man, so unlucky for you. In this mission, there are three places we gotta go. The first place is over to some train sensors where we can use our Spidey senses to see where it's messed up and find an underground guy in the control room. Then we'll take him out, fix the system, and get our next gadget, the Hollow Drone. We'll also use this time to get the most overpowered move in the game, the Venom Jump. With this Venom ability, we can stun a bunch of people in the air and take them out from there. This is also really good since we can easily finish off enemies after a jump and it also allows us to constantly fill up our Venom Bar. So yeah, we have our main form of damage now. Oh, by the way, even though we just got them, we're never using those Hollow Drones, so I hope you enjoyed their short cameo. Next, we're heading over to the yard since the trains aren't on their tracks. And of course, we're gonna see some more underground guys. From here, we start using some stealth kills. Stealth is really nice since it always one-shots opponents, but we usually just get a few stealth kills at the beginning of a big fight and then switch over to venom jumps and regular fighting when it's no longer efficient. Then we get to do a train puzzle where we pull stuff around and get the trains back on their tracks. There's not really much else I can say about this, but we use our venom powers and webs to get them going again before heading back to where we started. Here we have a bunch of underground goons who planted bombs, so more fighting, throwing bombs around, and finally we finished Uncle Aaron's mission, which means it's time to talk to him again where he recognizes that we're Spider-Man by how we fought Rhino on the news, but he said he'll keep it a secret and definitely won't be evil. Anyways, it's finally time to meet up with Finn, you know the childhood friend that came over during Christmas and I skipped our cutscenes, but on the way we can pick up two underground caches so we can use them for upgrades later. We also do Spider-Man's favorite thing, ignoring people. If you watch my speedrun for Spider-Man Remastered, you'll remember we used a pizza menu to skip out on talking to people. And this time, we'll use the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man app. At certain parts in some of the game's phone calls, we can open a mission on the app to interrupt the call and then close the mission a second later. Some people like our mom are persistent and call like five times, but it's still faster than actually listening to her. And we do the same thing with Finn a few times before meeting her before skipping all of her cutscenes again. This game really doesn't want you to learn what Finn looks like. This cutscene also teaches us about Rick, Finn's brother. Something clearly happened to him, but Finn won't tell us what just yet. Now we're heading back home with fast travel since it's finally unlocked. 
and it's time for our mom's campaign rally. Oh yeah, she's running for office by the way. So we head over with Genki, only to have the entire thing interrupted by the underground since they want to expose Krieger as a killer. We go on to fighting a bunch of goons, you know, just doing the regular Spider-Man techniques before getting into another cutscene. Now it's time for the next Spider-Man launch by changing the visual settings and doing the whole share button thing. This time we just got an okay launch, but after that we thankfully have a straight road so we could bunny hop the rest of the way over. Then we see that on the bridge, the underground and Krieger's soldiers are fighting. We skip the entire cutscene, but the short synopsis is that the campaign rally was just a distraction and the underground is actually after the new form in a car on the bridge. We also meet Tinkerer, the leader of the underground, who turns out to be Finn, so that's pretty awkward. After stealing the new form, she knocks us into the reactor and causes a huge explosion because of our venom, which leads to the fight you're seeing right now. And after all those goons are dealt with, we have to save a bunch of people with one of my favorite cutscenes in a video game. I definitely recommend watching the full thing later, but it pretty much comes down to a bunch of people are gonna die, so we use our Spider-Man powers to keep that from happening. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we have automatic quick time events turned on, which makes QTEs go way faster than a human could do them, and that results in this hilarious scene. <laughs> it literally sounds like a machine gun. Anyways, we save everyone, only for Krieger's goons to blame us for everything. Which, to be fair, isn't entirely false, but kinda messed up given all we just did. But just as they're about to kill us, we learn that we have a new power, invisibility. Yeah, Miles is just getting cooler and cooler. We also kinda go through a dilemma where we're like, wow, they were gonna murder us, and wow, we almost killed a lot of people with that explosion. But we get inspiration from our mom. She decides to not give up on her campaign, so we won't give up on being Spider-Man. Which means finally we create Miles' new design for the Spider-Man suit, which just looks so good. New suit, new us, and now it's time to figure out why Finn is doing all this. So we head over to Mason's repairs. Now usually you would investigate everything, trying to put together all the pieces, but instead we go straight for this suspicious wall and destroy it like the great friend we are. Which yeah, this place looks a little bit different than the other area. Here we find some videos on the computer, one with Finn and her brother Rick, planning on destroying the new form since it makes people sick. In the next one being Jess Finn who's all by herself where apparently she lost her phone and all the proof she had of what happened. But before we can really think about that, the underground comes by and it's time for some more fighting. Which means we get to use our invisibility powers which are OP. When we turn invisible everyone completely loses us which lets us do more stealth attacks. But obviously once we attack or get hit by a random projectile the invisibility goes away. Then after all those goons are down we can use the speed up trick again on this next cutscene. It doesn't give us a super jump this time, but it will speed up the cutscene for a few seconds, and if we can get a good one, we can save some time. Oh, and for some reason this only works on some of the cutscenes in this game, which is why we don't always use it. Now we decide to head over to one of Roxanne's labs, with a mysterious figure watching us. Kinda weird, but I don't have time for that, cause we're on to our next glitch. In this area, normally you would defeat the enemies and power off the electricity covering the vent. Instead, we want to get the enemies to notice us, and then climb onto this wall into the lower right corner. Then once this sword guy does his swing attack, we can aim right before he hits us and go through the wall. From here we want to web up to right above this vent, jump down, and immediately dodge to the left once we hit the next dialogue trigger. Then we can go to this empty void, jump down, and mash dodge again until we get completely under the map. Thankfully we can still swing in this state, so we use that to aim for the bottom of this vent before restarting from the last checkpoint. By doing all of this, we save time both by not fighting and not crawling through the vents so it's pretty cool. Then we'll progress through the building, using our invisibility to get past a couple of enemies before someone shows up. Well, you won't get to see them, but it's the Prowler who turns out to be our uncle, so that's a weird coincidence. He's trying to make sure we don't die and agrees to help us find the phone. He gives us some remote mines, our next gadget, which will electrocute in one shot anyone in their vicinity. We can also use them on fuse boxes to make their radius bigger and beat everyone inside the room by using them and a few stealth kills. This opens up the room with the new form reactor and the phone is all the way at the bottom, so we have to take out all the guys in here, spin some gears to open the wires up, and destroy those so we don't get chopped into pieces by the fan. Then unfortunately we skip a really important cutscene where we look at the videos on the phone, but what happens is Rick and Finn are trying to destroy the new form, only for Krieger to have been prepared the entire time. So Krieger traps Rick and murders him in cold blood. That was probably pretty traumatizing for Finn. And because of this, we decide that we need to destroy the reactor in Rick's place. We convince 
hits Prowler to open it up for us and use our Venom on it. Yeah, we maybe almost died, but it happens, and after like half a minute of walking slower, we're back to normal. The phone did unfortunately get destroyed in the process though, so there goes that evidence, but at least we now know what happened to Finn. So after that, we meet back up with Prowler, do some duo fighting, even though Prowler barely even damages anyone, the lazy jerk, and escape using the subway train. Here we now have a conversation with Prowler, where he tells us that we should use Finn to gain access to the underground and stop whatever she plans on doing. Miles really doesn't want to go through with this though, and thinks maybe we could just tell her that we're Spider-Man instead, but Prowler gaslights us and we go off his plan. Not before we get another underground cache though, and get to skip more conversations with both Peter and Finn herself. I love ignoring people. But then we have a conversation where we unfortunately can't ignore Finn since the cutscene's unskippable. We tell Finn that we found out that she's the tinkerer and want to help her. She eventually agrees, but in order for the underground to trust us, we need to jump off a crane onto a building to show we're fearless. And here we have the funniest trick in the game where instead of going on the train and wasting a bunch of time, we can stand in this corner before holding the run button and up left on a joystick. The game wants Miles to go towards the crane, but we're pushing the other way, so he just jumps off onto the road instead. And this starts the cutscene for jumping immediately, giving us another nice little time save. Now we get to enter the underground's base, and I'm not gonna lie, this place is kind of awesome looking, but before we move on, we need to check out a few things. We look at their collection of Martin Lee's masks, Wilson Fist looking attractive as always, some news coverage, and a whole bunch of money. Then we walk over to the training grounds while texting Genki. I like to block people while texting because I think it's funny, and eventually we get another skippable cutscene where we tell Finn that we need to go help our mom and leave, but that's obviously a lie because instead we're suiting up to fight. The way we start this fight is just like any other. Take out the snipers and easy guys right away with some stealth attacks before using our mines and venom jumps to beat up everyone else. Pretty simple stuff. Then we find a secret layer under a statue, which leads us to Finn and a bunch of goons. We learn that they moved the new form, so we go invisible to take a picture of their map so Genki can find out exactly where. We somehow don't get caught, but then once Finn leaves, we immediately get caught by someone else. And this person has the underground's newest weapon, the whip sword. These guys are super annoying since venom jumps don't work on them, but at least we can still use mines. We also always want to deal with them first, since if we don't, they can interrupt our combos on other enemies, so that's pretty annoying. But once the fight's over, Genki tells us the location of the new farm, and we head over. Unfortunately, the entrance is covered by an electric panel, and to get through it, we first need to destroy four generators. Now how these generators work is really funny, because as long as there's no enemies right besides them, you can destroy them. So for the first one, we take out two enemies and quickly destroy it like normal. But for the second one, we can bait all the enemies by revealing ourselves, run away, and go completely invisible. They'll chase after us and then lose track of us, so we can destroy the generator without fighting anyone, which is hilarious. Then the third and fourth are normal where we defeat everyone in the area before slamming down and entering the lair. And after crawling through some vents, we see a container with the new form, but need to open it up. So we get to have some fun connecting generators and then learn that Finn's plan is to blow up Roxxon Plaza using the new form you know, in a cutscene we skip. This will be really dangerous, but there's supposed to be no casualties, so it won't be that bad. Still, we can't let her go ahead and do this plan, so we try to steal the new form, only for a bunch of guys to show up. And as you've been seeing, we can do some pretty hilarious stealth kills since these guys don't pay attention, and eventually take out everyone nice and easy. But when we go for the new form again, this time Finn comes in, and another chase sequence ensues. This chase sequence is also really funny, because the entire time Miles is like, hey, slow down, I I have something to tell you, since he now wants to tell Finn that he's Spider-Man. But like, why would she slow down when she doesn't know your Miles? Anyways, we have some fun chasing, she tries to completely murder us with some saw blades, and at the end, she defeats us and gets ready to go in for the kill. But just before she does, Miles finally takes off his mask, and she's like, oh. Then we both run away from the police. So yeah, that was a really awkward situation. And in order to figure out what to do, Miles calls upon his uncle. And Uncle Aaron pretty much says we're dealing with too much stress and need to take some time to make some beats. Here, Uncle Aaron gives us an original sound clip and tells us that we need to find where it came from. So for this one, we need to go on top of some containers and record a buoy, nice and easy. But the fun part is that this is about 10 seconds of gameplay between two unskippable cutscenes. At the very least, this clears our head 
head, so we decide to see Finn and talk her out of everything. Uncle Aaron asks us where, which definitely won't come back to bite us, and we decide to go to Trinity Church the next day. But before meeting Finn, I decided to get the upgrade Deep Pockets, which will give us extra gadget ammo, and I also got some new skills. The most important one is the Venom Dash Launcher, but I'll explain that later when we actually use it. Anyways, we meet with Finn, but she still wants to go through with her plan. So again, we get some more awkwardness. But what's even more awkward is that Rhino flies in from the sky and knocks out both of us. Later, we wake up to everyone's favorite totally not evil person, Krieger. Yep, turns out he never gave Rhino to the police. Since we have tech protecting us from Krieger taking off our mask, he gets his goons to beat us up repeatedly and probably try to kill us, only for Miles to use a Mega Venom Blast. Yeah, we really almost die a lot in this game. Now we have the task of making it out the building. There's not too much to say about most of it, besides how we learned that Prowler betrayed us in a cutscene that we skipped, though we wanted Krieger to just take Finn and leave us alone. Which, not sure why you would trust Krieger to do that, but whatever. Other than that, there's a bunch of fighting, some puzzles, and one spot where we can use the speed up glitch to make a cutscene go faster. Always love to see those. In this cutscene, Finn's like, why do you keep lying to me? And we're like, uh... But that gets interrupted by Krieger's goons. Then the next fighting section is pretty interesting because for once we want to be stealthy the entire time. If we mess up the stealth, a bunch of extra guys are going to come in and fight, which means we need to play smart. Now I did make a few mistakes in this section and I was like 74% sure I messed up, but the extra guys never showed up so that's cool I guess. And now it's time to fight Rhino again. This time though he has new armor which protects him from our venom, so instead we have to beat him by making him run into tanks. Normally you would want to jump on his back and steer him towards a tank like you do for the first hit, but after that we can actually position ourselves right by a tank and simply juke him to make it a bit faster. Then it's time for the second phase where Rhino starts throwing tanks. For this phase we want to dodge into the tank, do a venom jump to power the generator, and then throw the generator at him. And after a few times of doing that, Finn and Miles do a team combo and his shields are down. So now we get my personal favorite part of the fight where we do a venom punch into a combo, into a venom punch, into a combo, and finally into a venom punch. Kinda hilarious that this dude is supposed to be scary. Now Finn really wants to kill Rhino, but we're like, nah, that's some villain stuff, so we ask her not to. And instead, we check out the computer here, which tells us if Finn's plan goes through, the entirety of Harlem will get blown up, not just Roxxon Plaza. But while this is happening, Rhino makes fun of how Rick died, so Finn goes in for the kill, and we stop her. She then gets really mad because we messed up everything for her, and literally beats us within an inch of our lives, before saying to never see her again. Yeah, that was pretty dark. But our boy Genki comes in for the rescue, and brings us home, where our mom learns that we're Spider-Man, and she's surprisingly cool about it. So with that, we all work together and make a plan to save Harlem. And the first part of that plan involves finding the new form. Genki is able to locate Finn's setup at the Oscorp Science Center, so we head over. We also do some air tricks on the way to fill up our venom, and do some old-fashioned ignoring Genki when he tries to call us. But after we ignore him a few times, our uncle knocks us out and locks us up. Here, Prowler explains that what we're doing is way too dangerous, and instead we should hide away and let Finn and Krieger kill each other, but that would make for a pretty bad hero, so we escape and get ready to fight him. And this fight is just as easy as the last one. Our main strategy for all three phases is to use both Venom punches and mines. These can stun Prowler, and then we get a huge combo on him without letting him disappear. We can also refill our mines at the start of each new phase by restarting from the last checkpoint, so this is pretty consistent. Now I did make a mistake on Prowler's third phase during my combo, since I got him into the stun, but he spawned some clones, and for some reason, reason Miles auto targeted over to them. So that was a little annoying, but after a bit, we finish Prowler off and can finally end the fight. Miles then webs his uncle's hand, tells him he's kind of a loser, and goes back to find the new form. But once we make it to the science center, it's surrounded by goons, just like usual. We want to take out a few snipers before anything else, since they're less aggro, and then go on top of the science center and wait for everyone to come to us. Then we can use venom jumps and also a venom dash into a jump when we see the sword guys. That's the upgrade we got earlier that I was talking about, and it works correctly at least like 50% of the time. Anyways, after a bunch of putting people to sleep forever, it's time to take out some more generators. And this time, the puzzle involves giving power to closed doors. Like any puzzle though, it's pretty easy when you already know the solution, so we quickly make it into the science center. This is when we get a nice flashback about how Finn and Miles won a competition and got their science project displayed here. We want to go see it, but unfortunately, it's in the special exhibit, which you need tickets for. Kinda dumb that we didn't get those for free, but when has Osborne been smart? I also try to fake out the ticket lady by strafing back and forth, but 
it didn't work. So we find a way to sneak in, but to do it, we need to find some stuff to help us. We take a reflective thing and this weird mutable box that you can control with an app. Oh, also some idiot bumped into us here. What a jerk. Anyways, we combine those two things, slide it under the door, and use a phone flashlight to open the door. After that, we can use the elevator from the back and laugh at the lady as we do it. Finally, we see our project, which I have no idea what this even is, and get to have a picture of Rick. What a great guy. But back to present day, we find the new form in this same spot, but right as we go to take it, Finn yet again destroys us and sends the goons. So we have to escape and stop her from exploding Harlow. Not too much I can really say about this fighting though, since I'm pretty sure we covered almost everything. It's just a bunch of Venom jumps and finishers, but then it's time to head back to Harlem. And on the way there, we're gonna do some more tricks to get our Venom up one last time before the end of the game. Once we reach Harlem, there's a huge war going on between the underground and Krieger's goons. So our job is to stop it by beating everyone. Eventually, once we deal with the little guys, we see a reaction has started and we don't have much time. Also, Prowler comes by and decides to be a good person for once, so that's pretty cool, which allows us to completely focus on Finn while he helps the people. We tell Finn that the explosion would destroy all of Harlem, not just Roxanne Plaza, but she obviously doesn't believe us since when haven't we lied to her, and that means we need to take her down. Now, all four of her phases are pretty much the same as how we dealt with Prowler. We want to use our Venom attacks and mines to stun Tinkerer and then do some air combos until she reaches the next cutscene. The final phase is a bit different though, since after beating up Tinkerer for a while, she starts throwing us and using these saw attacks. But pretty simply, we can dodge three of them, press triangle, and get two hits in. Finally, after repeating that sequence three times, our final boss is done, but the speedrun's not over yet. We still need to fall down with Finn as she finally realizes, wow. I'm gonna kill a lot of people, but not all hope's gone just yet. Miles still has enough power to slowly walk over to the reactor, and I mean really slowly. Honestly though, kinda worth the time loss because this scene is super sick. But after we make it there, Miles uses the last of his powers to absorb the explosion, and as soon as this cutscene plays, we end off time 2, 40, 31. If you're wondering what happens after the speedrun though, I'll give you the short synopsis. Miles is still going to explode since he has all this energy, so Finn flies into the the air with him, sacrificing herself. Miles thankfully survives though, and now all the people recognize that he's their Spider-Man. Anyways, that speedrun puts us at third place on the leaderboards, which I'm really proud of. Alright, subscribe if you enjoyed, bye.